The day may come when the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day. This day we fight by all that you hold dear on this good earth. In your eyes, I see the same fear that would take the heart of me. The day may come and the age of PFME dies. But it is not this day. This day, we are here for Frodo to defeat the forces of Mordor once and for all. In the beautiful map Blackgate, which is remastered, reworked, reforged in the Battle of Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. Okay, so boys, what is the plan? The plan is to survive. And as you guys know, I mean, eventually you have seen the Black Gate, you know, multiple times already, but trust me, you have never seen it this way. This is going to be, in terms of difficulty, in the next level, you know what I'm saying? So, we cannot stay in the middle, unfortunately. I have, like, normally big balls, you know, I, I'm not hesitating to stay in the middle, but we will get overwhelmed, uh, because this mission got incredibly hard. We need to eventually use even War of Power very, very early uh, to not lose the second camp. And as you know, normally you have like a third, you know, camp in this mission, but we disabled it. And also you have like really long cooldowns on your War of Power and also on your EOD. You can only use it one single time. You cannot use it a second time. That's not possible. And the same goes also to the Offbreaker Summon from Aragorn. So you need to be extremely smart about when and what to use it. It, you know, at the time you need to use it, if, you, if this makes sense for you guys, okay? Be still. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> we need to eventually get some more units up on the field, but I don't like those Gondor archers. I'm gonna actually sell them right after to get the archer range level 2. That's gonna give me the chance to purchase the fire upgrade and also recruit some of the Etherian rangers. And we need to pray. We need to pray that we can hold the line. We need to pray that we can buy enough time for Frodo to drop the One Ring into the Mount Doom and destroy the evil once and for all. Okay, so the good thing is when we clump like this around this area, with the well behind, we have like a lot of recovery and sustain, and also we have like a lot of leadership. So in total, we will get Arag Aragorn's leadership, Boromir's leadership, uh, Legolas doesn't give leadership to the rangers, but we might also recruit some Elven warriors later on. Money is not a problem, but you see, even catapults are coming now against camping situations, so we need to use our heroes all the time, boom, with the Zap Blast, and, uh, you know, take down the catapults because they will outrange our archers all the time. The good thing is, though, every single unit and every single hero we have on the field are level 10. It means we have a lot of DPS with the Elven Gifts, they are dealing more damage, they are also becoming more tanky. But you can see, normally this mission was designed that you have like waves, you know, like first wave, then you have like a break. But now look at this. <laughs> look at this. The Nazgûs are coming, ladies and gentlemen. The Nazgûs are coming. And there are a lot of them coming. Holy cockam, holy. <laughs> and they're also thank you in this mission by quite a lot. So you cannot one-shot them anymore. And they will wipe out a lot of our army. And the thing is, the AI now is designed to focus down your heroes. So you can... You need to be careful, you know, to not lose your, you know, heroes like Boromir, Aragorn. Even they would get one-shotted because the Orcs level 10 have a huge buff in this mission. They will hit like a truck and be also very tanky. Luckily for us, they are actually ignoring our archers and attacking <laughs> the Citadel. But you can see, it takes quite a long time to take down those Nazgûs. Okay, I mean... Um, again, what I wanted to explain is normally in this mission you would have like a, like a weave coming and then there is like a break between the waves and now from the side lanes there will be movement kills attacking you all the time your castle your camps and there is going to be endless waves of units coming from orcs early on later on it's going to be stronger units and also catapults to destroy your archers every single time so long story short it's in terms of difficulty way way harder and hopefully it's enjoyable for you guys once you manage to get to this mission. Uh, obviously that requires you to first of all defend Helm's Deep which is gonna be also very challenging Then you need to also defend the White City Minas Tirith before you can finally move on to the Black Gate. So all these key missions are quite improved um, starting from the Moria mission, Lothlorien, then you have also Osgiliath and uh, Southern Italian, Shilob Slayer, Sirit Ingol, you know like a lot of improvement has been done, a lot of work and also time has been invested into those missions 
And again, the goal is to make it a bit more challenging by increasing the difficulty a little bit. Because the only thing that was bothering me the most about the campaign in the Battle for Middle Earth 1 was actually the difficulty. It was just like a, you know, like a walk into the park, you know what I'm saying? It was just way too easy. And hopefully, with these adjustments we have implemented into those missions, this is a little bit improved and a little bit changed. It was hard for me, I mean for us, to decide um, if the difficulty is too low or too high, you know, because I don't want to make it very difficult for myself and expect everybody to play the same way I play, you know, that's why it was hard, you know, to make a call, to make a final choice, okay, is this enough, should we make it a bit easier, should we make it a bit harder, but I think the results are perfect, and again, in the patch 2.22, nothing is set in stone. Remember, we have an update, uh, updatable launcher. That means every time we launch a new update for the patch 2.22, all you gotta do is open your launcher and click on update button, and you are good to go. I mean, Black Geek was also in the in the films, you know, very very uh, great scene. Unfortunately, uh, what I would like to see a bit more in this mission, in the films, was the fight itself. I think we have seen more from Sam and Frodo Baggins. Uh, I mean, obviously they are also main characters. I mean, especially Frodo Baggins, he was struggling, the ring was taking over him, and then you have like this bit, you know, this insane fr friendship moments between Sam and Frodo, in which Sam was the real carry, you know, he was like even carrying Frodo Baggins. But I wish we could have seen a bit more from the fights. I feel like we have not seen maybe less than five minutes in total from the fights. We have seen the moment when they engage with Frodo. And we have seen the moment when Aragorn was fighting against a troll. We have seen the eagles coming, the Nazgul's coming, but that's pretty much it, right? We have not seen a lot from the fights. And I'm kind of, you know, a little bit sad about it. I think this was one of the one of the best fights in which the good side wasn't only defending. It was the first time actually they do something offensively. Remember tr uh, throughout the entire trilogy, uh, you know, Gondor and Rohan, they were in a in a defensive formation. They had like the fight in Helm's Deep. Then they had the big fight in Minas Tirith. They were, you know, we had like a small fight in Osgiliath, in which Osgiliath was defended, and you know, most of the time, defending, defending, defending. And that was the first time they would make an offensive move. But instead of showing us what is going on, uh, the filmmakers decided, okay, let us show, let us show them Frodo Baggins all the time. And don't get me wrong, I like Frodo, and I think in the in the books he was a better guy than in the films. He was, you know, in the films he was like a douchebag. It was like trusting, I mean, obviously, it's like a debatable thing, right? I mean, the ring was taking control of him, his will was getting weaker, weaker, weaker every single second, and I don't know, I mean, still, you know, how can you believe Gollum, Smeagol, over your best friend who would never let you down, Samwise Gamgee? And it was like a heartbreak, heartbreaking moment for me, to be honest with you. Okay, so lots of orcs, lots of orcs, lots of orcs, 8 minutes 50. I'm sorry for talking a lot, but this mission gives me always like a goosebumps, you know? And it's been a long time since I played this mission last time, officially, in the Battle for Middle of One without any mods. And I'm happy, dude. I'm really happy with the difficulty of this mission quite a lot. And hopefully you guys will also like it and you manage to do it. I mean, it's a challenge, right? It's a challenge that you have to give it a shot. You might feel once or twice, but a true warrior never gives up and never surrenders. We're under attack. Okay, now it might look easy, but as you can see in the Black Gate, they are building an army worthy of Mordor, you know? And soon they will be ready to march out. The Moomer kills. They don't stand a chance though, they get literally one shot, they get blown away. Look, look, he's raging, so we need to go back. And the problem is, those Moomer kills have also Haradrims on top of them, and they are also level 10. They're also hitting like a truck, so we need to go for another blast if we can. EOD, as you can see, is still loading, and you can only use it once. So the one key thing when you play this mission yourself is when to use the EOD summon. When. This is a very important choice you have to make, because you can only use it one single time. You can not use it a second time. That's not possible. It will be on cooldown. It's a really long cooldown. We have just changed for this one mission. Because normally we wanted to we wanted to dis disable this completely, you know. <laughs> normally we wanted to make sure that you are not able to use EOD at all, because it, you know realistically in the film there was also no EOD in this mission. But 
I feel like when players are grinding to get the power points unlocked, they will they should also have the chance to at least use it one single time in a mission, you know? That's why we decided to leave it enabled, but with a longer cooldown. I mean, the thing is, we need to make sure to protect the second camp. If you don't know what's gonna happen, they will try to focus your buildings down. And if they manage to destroy every single building, regardless of your army, regardless how strong you are, you will be defeated. So you cannot hope that your units are gonna be alive, but your buildings can be destroyed. No, you need to make sure to save both of them. Okay, more catapults are coming, but we can actually just kill them in a second. And I'm also pretty tempted to actually go inside the Black Gate fully and go for a juicy, beautiful, hitting like a truck, water of power moment. You shall not pass moment. Okay, <laughs> this is so satisfying, dude. You see this endless waves of level 10 orcs coming all the time. And also Mumaki is spawning every couple of minutes from the side lanes. And uh, yeah, yeah, this is what I like to see. And I, I believe, guys, please let me know in the comment section down below if I'm wrong or not. But I think the campaign of the battle for Middle Earth 1 is basically like watching the films. And with that, I'm trying to say is you can play it one single time, but it's not going to be enough. After like a one or two years, you have like still the motivation. Unlike me, because I just lost my motivation. My Gandalf intent. My Gandalf is like, hey, what is up there? Let me go under the Mumbai kill. <laughs> how to handicap yourself? That's not how you're supposed to play. Because now, look, the Mumbai kill is attacking the wall around my camp. And Gandalf has like a really long revive time, dude. Uh, but again, nothing happened. We pretend like this never happened, okay, guys? Because, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to talk and play at the same time, I'm struggling. I'm getting older, you know what I'm saying? I'm 31 years old. And back to the what back to what, what I wanted to say, sorry. I think playing this is like watching the films, right? You can play it now, and then after like a year or two, you have again the motivation and the will to give it another shot. And that's why we wanted to improve this because I believe it's like an evergreen game, even though realistically, this game is old, right? It's gonna be almost 20 years old very very soon, and unfortunately, in 2010. EA Games abandoned this game, that means there is no more server support since over 12 years in total. But it's still a popular game, despite the fact it has no advertisement, no, you know, no competition, no marketing at all behind this project. But I think it's still one of the best RTS games ever made. It's one of the most unique RTS games ever made, especially Battle for Middle Earth 1. I mean, BFM 2 and Rise of the Witch King are kinda, kinda like a Age of Empires style of a game, but this one is so unique, you know? That's the reason, and also because it's like uh, it's like playing the films. It's a very good game. <laughs> I just can't stop it, you know? That's why I'm here in 2022. And can you imagine, guys, when I started to play this game for the first time, I was actually 13 years old. Thanks for the follow, appreciate it, on the Twitch channel. I was actually 13 years old, and now I'm 31. So basically, 1-3 was my age, now I'm 3-1, and I'm still here, you know? And very soon I will have a son, uh, and I will try to teach him, when he grows up a little bit, to play this game. <laughs> I don't want this game to die anytime. And I hope maybe, because of your help, guys, as we are getting lots of views on this channel, and also lots of subscribers, by the way, you should subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, maybe EA Games or any other game developing country, uh, company, sorry, not country, can actually see that there is still potential in these games. See that there is still lots of hype, lots of fans around these games, about these games, you know, of these games. And then maybe we can get those people, get those companies kind of kind of encouraged to, you know, make a new game based on the Battle for Middle of uh, Lord of the Rings RTS game. Not a mobile game anymore. Please stop it, you know. <laughs> I can't stand mobile games. Mobile games. The reason is simple because. Like almost every single mobile game I've ever played or I've ever heard of is actually pay to win. Okay, boys, it is time. Boom, son, on your face. Gandalf striking once again. Okay, so we need to only hold for 45 seconds until we can call Elma's army, you know, the, the Rohan army we have built up over the time. But... 
That doesn't mean that the mission is victorious. That would be a little bit too easy and there is still a lot of stuff to come. Okay, we killed him. That's good. Look, <laughs> this guy, you know, the Moonway Kills are trying to make the Gonda camp look like a Mordor camp. Oh, you see, now the combos are coming. Trample orcs with knights. What knights? I don't have knights. <laughs> Sorry, I have like a ranger army. Trolls are coming now. Everyone is um, Every one of them is level 10. I mean, the thing is, uh, we are clumped in a, in a location. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually... Uh, give them whole crown stands, those Rohan horse heroes. Put them also next to the archers, so they have also even more leadership. And we can also put the Rohirrim archer in between them. And then the normal Rohirrim army, the normal Rohirrim warriors, we can also use later on, you know, to defend the second camp if it's needed. Oh, okay. Um, you see, now you, you see combos, right? Level 10 combos all over the place. But, oh my goodness, man, <laughs> we need to find a solution to this problem. The thing is, I don't want to split my army too much. And also, in this mission, we have disabled the statues. So, you cannot build a statue even for more insane amount of leadership to have, like, zero struggle. The thing is, if our units wouldn't be level 10, we would not be able to defend this. But as we are level 10, with Boromir damage leadership, Aragorn damage leadership, Theodine damage leadership, we have actually crazy amount of DPS, and we want... You know, one tap and one shot everything that is coming anywhere close to our camps. Especially around the Rohan. And if you are wondering why I'm fighting around the Rohan camp and not around the Gonda camp, it's simple because Rohan camp has like more openings. I mean, now, obviously, I could also fight in the Gonda camp because it's like wide open now. But, you know, that's the main reason. I just generally can't stand the Gonda camp. It's like a very tiny opening which kind of handicaps you more than it handicaps the... Open in, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so. Surviving, 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 and hoping for the last stand. Come on, Frodo Baggins. Come on, Samwise Gamgee. Hmm. Okay, so. We have also every single Rohirrim, beside the one, is level 10. The full upgrades shields, heavy armor, and also forge blades and banner. Okay, we need to trample down those combos. They are coming to the second. You see like two lines coming, you know, one line is going to the one camp and the other line is going to the other camp. I mean, this camp is kind of protected. We can go for a visa plus once again on the on the, on the the catapults to make sure that we can kill them before they can do anything else. But in the meantime, we need to protect this area. Very important. This level 10 orcs, they are ignoring our Rohirrim summon. They want to actually go for the camp, which is very smart. But the thing is, we have a lot of money, right? But the problem is, we can't use the money at all. Like, we are command points kept big time. We won't be able to recruit any more units anytime soon in this mission. Until we lose our army. But if we lose our army, it's gonna be doomed anyway. So, the money is kinda useless. We have like, what, 107,000, dude? What the heck? I mean, the thing is, as you know, in, in BFME 1 campaign, the thing, when you get like a mission done, every mission gives you like a bonus. Like more command points, for example, more power points, or even more uh, multiplier on the resource income. And you see at the bottom left side of your screen, there is like a X3.5. That's the amount of money we get. Uh, we get 3.5 times more money than we would normally get in a normal game, you know? That's what it means. Okay, we need to lure those trolls to our army. Come on, trolls, follow me, please. Okay, so... Oh, let them come, as Gimli would like to say. Okay, now it's only about holding defend. Oh, you see the Mumma kill is running wild. Hopefully he won't. I, I can't move really because I'm in a very good spot. I don't want to move at all. My Legolas got killed though. That's very unfortunate. Oh my goodness. The Mumma kill just one-tapped my Aragorn. Oof. And also guys, the new version of the patch 2.22 got released. With all the campaign changes, with all the campaign improvements, you can just, you know, again, open your launcher, click on update. And then, you know, after watching this video, hopefully, you can start playing your own campaign. The good campaign got only reworked, but also, of course, in long terms, we will also rework the evil campaign. The thing is, guys, unfortunately, I need, I need to be honest with you, it's very time-consuming, right? It's not like a mission can be done in 10 minutes. It's not like the Black Gate here, because, especially for us, because we have zero experience yet, you know? You make a change, it kind of crushes the game. We made a change, 
it was having like lots of bugs. So in order to make one mission all alone work, countless hours were it was needed to make it happen. So in, that's why the evil campaign is gonna take a while until it's gonna be finished because you want to make sure that it doesn't have have like any bugs or errors you can eventually run into if this makes sense for you guys so if you enjoy it if you enjoy the good campaign if you want to see the evil campaign make sure to leave a like on this video and also subscribe to the channel because that's gonna cost you nothing but it's a huge spot anyway i would really really appreciate it a lot okay 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 so uh come on the third wave you see there is like you see on the minimap there is like a huge giant uh, wall of units in, you know we can go for a visa uh, not visa blast but a war of power there in this situation mordor is emptying defend your camps at all cost okay now we are talking and the timer doesn't even appear yet the timer for for the frodo so basically i mean obviously you have eventually played this mission a couple of times but when you come close to the end there will be a timer and it will say for example five minutes until frodo drops the ring sorry for interrupting you gandalf and there will be like a timer which tells you okay five minutes until frodo destroys the one ring this mission is not about defeating mordor because you can't they have like endless endless supply you will have endless amount of units and the longer the game goes on the more chances you will have to lose i mean again we are camping in this area completely because I was too scared. I actually, I gotta be honest, I got defeated. Now you see Frodo arrives at Mount Doom in four minutes. And that's the time we need to be, you know, staying alive. Defeat trolls with arches. Okay, now more, more, more <laughs> Nazgûls are coming. We gotta use, now we need to use AOD. Now, that's what I saved AOD for. Because you see what's coming, right? You see how many trolls are coming? The Nazgûls too. <laughs> Nazgûls too, yes. They don't want to die too, the Nazgûls. They are so tanky, man. Okay, the good thing is, imagine if you wouldn't save the EOD for the, for the troll army. Imagine that. I think they would have smashed us. Again, it has like a really long cooldown, guys. You can only use it one single time, so you want to be extremely careful and smart about the timing. About when and where. Okay, three more minutes, boys. The Nazgûls, they refuse to die. And please, a question to you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think about the new fall and dead animation of the, Naz of the Nazgûls? Do you, do you like it? You know, in terms... I mean, obviously, normally in BFM1, they were exploding in the mid-air. You know, they were exploding. Now they fall on the ground. They don't deal damage, though. Because it will kind of be like a direct buff to the Nazgûls. I don't think they will need any buffs anytime soon. But it's like more realistic. The eagles, they will still explode because, you know, ideally, and that's like the plan of the patch 2.22, we want to have unique stuff for everything. So exploding is going to be still in the game, but it's going to be exclusive for the, for the eagles. Now the Nazgûls and the Witch King, they're going to fall from the sky like a bird, you know, when you get and you can kill them. And in long terms, we are also planning to add more unique stuff for each faction, for each unit, for each hero. But again, unfortunately, it's time consuming and we cannot do this in a full time job. That's not possible. But trust me, every minute we can spare, every minute we can, you know, do stuff, we are doing stuff. Even though there might be some days, uh, some days I won't be able to upload to the YouTube channel, there might be some days I can, uh, some days I can stream on Twitch. But it doesn't mean that in those days, I'm not doing anything for BFME, you know, <laughs> every day, every day we do something for BFME. So you guys can have an improved version, more balance, more fun, better looking. Because when there is no company behind it, we gotta stay behind it, if this makes sense. We won't let those games die. Okay, one more minute. I mean, again, when you play it for yourself, you can also try to stay in between the gates, like the original location of the army of the of the fellowship. But for me, it was a little bit too risky, especially when I do commentary and play at the same time. It's for me very hard. <laughs> I'm getting older, guys. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? It also happens to me when I play competitively. When I play like a one new, I'm a, I'm a good player in BFM One. I know what I'm doing, and I can also most of the time execute it. But I have the feeling then 
the feeling is actually pretty strong lately that when I when I play and I'm streaming at the same time or when I'm actually recording at the same time, I'm I want to make a entertaining video for you guys and I think you know not talking is kind of like boring in long terms. In, but I feel like when I talk and play at the same time, I make mistakes all the time. GG well played though, Frodo made it to the mountain with the help of the Samwise Gamgee and the good factions are victorious once again. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, if you did please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more videos like this in the future, I will see you next time, until then, take care of yourselves, keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Let's watch the end though, peace out guys.